Hey campers, George here, back in the man cave again. Today is a hot muggy day outside and if you saw my previous video, I, I went on a quick walkabout and made myself a, a quick lunch. I had uh, purchased a new stove that I had seen online and it came in and I wanted to give it a try. And I, I used it and a couple of people had asked me about the stove, so I thought I'd do kind of an official review of it so you can actually see what it's about from Red Camp. Here it is. Comes in this package. The typical plastic container that uh, all these one burner style stoves come in. This is a little bit bigger. Obviously because the stove is bigger, packaging that it comes in. And, and this is where you would keep it when you put it in your backpack. It's a little bigger than normal when you compare it to another one. Let me just grab that quickly. And here you see is a MSR Pocket Rocket. It's quite a difference in size. Now, the pocket rocket works great. Really concentrates the heat in one place and it really, it, it boils water just fine. I've had no problems with it. So I thought I'd share this with you and I'm gonna go through it. So before we even get started, I'm gonna put up some specs here and some pictures for you and then we'll get into it. So they, you got to look at the specs and some pictures in the plastic. The lid just pops on and, and it stays on. It don't go in. Now immediately you can see how big the base is, the actual cooking base. You can see the flame area is going to be around here. And if you look really closely, you can see it has two flame rings on it. With these two flames, this thing's rated pretty hot. They advertise it as being 4,600 watts of power. That's a lot of heat. I'll be doing a, a boil test on it. It's the easy way to show um, how well it works as far as boiling water. And you can see it wraps up just like all the other ones do. Basically the same thing. I'm really starting to like this idea of not putting the stove directly onto a gas canister. When you have a big pot on it, it's a little unstable. You have your, your, your hose and then you'll connect to the gas can. And I must admit, this is probably the best one I've had, how easily it lines up and gets on there. No leak. And you have your control on here. This is where I start having issues because in the advertising is on here, they actually show a plus and minus with an arrow so you know which way to turn it to bring the heat up, turn it off, or adjust the heat level. This does not have it. Not a big deal for me, I'll figure it out. I hate that, I hate seeing something when I, which helps me make a decision to buy something, and then you get it and it doesn't have it on. Looking at the actual stove, first thing you're gonna see is how big the heating base is. Standard flip out feet, it is a tight fit. They don't just slip and slide, which is a good thing. It is a nice tight fit. Here's the next issue I'm gonna be talking about. You see these? They say they were serrated. I don't see any serratings on here. So it's kind of slippery. Um, I think I've, I've got a file that I'm gonna to use to rough it up just to make it a little bit more stable. It does have a piezo ignition and it works pretty good. I haven't had a problem with it. Oh, uh, it. It does spark very well. It came with a little ferro rod and striker. You know, I've done that before. I've done the whole lighting of the stove with a ferro rod. I think I did it in the video before. I carry a lighter, I carry a ferro rod. If your piezo fails, at least you can light it and give you that option. And it, it does spark pretty good. He says, setting the cottage on fire. <laughs> So I want to take some quick measurements here and what I'm going to look at is the diameter of of the flame base and you can see here it's about oh I'm going to say three and a quarter inches a pretty wide base probably one of the bigger bases I've seen I'm a big fan of the uh, peak one uh, stove because it has that big base one thing they did say was that it has a built-in windshield can you see it this is it here, around here. Not a true windshield by any means, but it's certainly gonna help the flame. 
I don't see a big advantage there. And you'll see when I boil the water, when you have a look at that, you could hear the flame spluttering because it got a little breezy at one point, but it didn't go out and it boiled the water just fine. And the other thing, <laughs> the base of the pot, almost five inches between each leg that it uh, you can place your pot or whatever you're going to be cooking on there. But if you have a smaller pot, that's going to be an issue. And here's why. Between here and there, the inner minimum distance is pretty big. It's like two and a quarter inches. Which means any pot that's less than two and a quarter inches wide is going to be a little suspect. One of the most popular cooking cook sets out there is the Stanley, this guy. Very popular and it works great. But on this stove, it barely sits on there. You can see just slightly off and not good. I'm going to be using typically the big old Stanley clunker. No problem there. And I can tell you that that's pretty stable. The height of the stove above ground, three inches. It's about three inches from there to there. So it sits pretty low to the ground, has a nice wide base. So it is stable if you have the right pot. And that's one of the reasons I'm starting to like this style of stove. As far as bigger pots and things like that, no problem here. It's when you get to the smaller pots and maybe even a, a mug might be a little suspect on there. So keep that in mind if you're looking at, at the stove. We're going to go out to the South 40. I'll show you me boiling some water and I, I timed it. Unfortunately, I was using an, an old phone to time it and the screen timed out so you couldn't actually see. I use a titanium pot that I have and I boiled about 300 milliliters of water, about eight ounces of water, which is a typical cup of coffee. And I took it to a rolling boil and it did it pretty quick. It was kind of breezy out there as well. And I didn't put the, the, the lid on the pot. I left it open. Typically, if I'm going to be cooking and I want to get water to boil quickly, if you put a lid on, it's going to boil just that much quicker. Does a good job. There is a lot of power coming out here. The problem that I have with that, and I suspect it's going to be a gas guzzler. For me, if I'm going on a long trip, walkabout, camping, hiking, that sort of thing, going to be out there for a couple of days or so, I'm not sure I'm going to take this. It's a little big, a little heavy, takes up a lot of room. But for my purposes, right now, I'm pretty happy with this guy. Price, price right, 20 bucks. You can't beat that with a big stick. Uh, one thing I will make, I need to warn you about and pay attention to that is that they stipulate that you cannot use this stove with the Coleman one pound propane tank. If you look at the advertising, it shows up on there and they put a big X through there. I'm not sure if they just mean just the Coleman one pounder or all propane one pound tanks, but don't take my word for it. Whatever you're going to use, if you're going to use propane, make sure that it works. Obviously, you're going to need an adapter. I'd recommend that anyway. So far, so good. I'm pretty happy with it. And I think this is going to be my walkabout, let's have dinner, lunch, breakfast cooker. Winter is coming. <laughs> Walkabouts in the winter. I love doing that. It's so quiet and peaceful out there. I will be cooking a lot more. So look, look for that coming up. Winter is not that far away. <laughs> Sorry to say can't wait for those minus 25 degree wind chill days. Red Camp. Portable. Double ring burning stove. I like that double ring. Don't forget. Like. Share. Subscribe. You know the story. And I'm pretty sure I'll be back with something else to share with you. Or we've got cook. Walkabout. Camp. 
and use this little beauty and see how well it does. Time will tell. Just saying. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.